All right, good news is we have truck parts to install today on the Raptor. The bad news is it's 90% humidity and the parts that we're gonna be installing require us to crawl underneath the truck. So we're gonna get a bit sweaty here, but it's fine, the show must go on. So anyway, in today's video, we're gonna be installing a new intercooler on my Raptor here. And real quick, just wanna talk about the two different options you have as far as intercoolers for these Raptors. First, you have the, the, the most typical, the front mount intercooler. That's gonna replace your factory intercooler, so it's gonna mount in the same exact location. It's gonna give you uh, slightly better flow, but also bigger surface area for better heat exchanging. The other intercooler that option you have is a high mount intercooler, which goes behind your grill significantly more modifications needed to the grill in order to accommodate that bigger core. But when you go with like a pre-runner style bumper that requires you to frame cut and it no longer allows you to run that factory intercooler, that's when you're gonna be looking for that high mount intercooler. Or if you're just looking for the top performance from any sort of intercooler, the high mount's the way to go. In my application, I'm gonna stick with that front mount intercooler. So let's talk through what we have today. CV, up fab CV Fabrications intercoolers. So they have both, both options, that front mount and that high mount. I went with the front mount, like I said. Benefits of this over the factory one. Again, it's gonna be slightly better flow. I don't think the flow is gonna to be too improved by going from the factory to this one. But what we'll see later on, once we get that factory one out of the uh, truck, is the size of this intercooler is much larger than the factory one. You have a couple different options when you are ordering your front mount intercooler. Man, this thing's heavy and hard to manipulate with one hand. Anyway, a couple different options you have when you purchase the front mount intercooler. So you can get black or silver. I went with silver. And then you can get a stencil along with the intercooler when you order it. So it doesn't come with the CVF painted on there. I went ahead and painted that on using a stencil that came in the kit. So real quick, let's talk through the painting process now. All right, thank you Waterfall R41 from the future. So let's talk through how I painted the CVF logo on the intercooler. So we're not gonna overthink it. It's really simple to do. And all we're gonna do is basically tape that template onto the front of the intercooler, mask off everything else. And then we're gonna hit that template lightly with some high temp paint. Now, do I think that it needs to be able to withstand up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit? Probably not. I don't think an intercooler is ever gonna get to that surface temp, but go ahead and use some high temp paint here. And I'm using Rust Oleum's engine enamel. There's a whole bunch of them at the auto parts store. And all we're gonna do is just lightly hit this, this um, template with the paint. We wanna make sure we're shooting 90 degrees at it. If we put this down and then we're shooting at an angle, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up getting some paint underneath it. All right, once you have everything sufficiently masked off to your comfort level, you can go ahead and start hitting it with paint. Again, I'm gonna try to do one or two really light coats. So I'm just gonna hit it real quick and then give it time to set and then I'm gonna go back over it again and hit it again. It's a little windy right now. So I'm gonna try to do it in between the wind gusts, but it should be pretty simple. Uh, like I said, don't overthink it. All right, one coat down, everything's looking pretty good. We're gonna give it a few more minutes for everything to set up and we're gonna hit it with another one. I'll go a little bit thicker on the second coat and then I think I'm gonna call it a day because it is looking good. All right, so there's the final product. Painting took all of about 45 minutes from masking everything off to the two coats of paint that I actually put on it. But now back to your regular schedule programming. All right, now that you're an expert on how to paint your intercooler, let's go ahead and jump into the installation process. It's pretty simple. Uh, again, it's just pulling out the factory intercooler and then replacing it with the aftermarket one from CVF. The only challenge is gonna be is one, this is a pretty heavy intercooler. And also it's gonna take up a hell of a lot more real estate once you put it in behind the bumper. So getting that factory one out is gonna be pretty easy. Sliding this guy into place, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna require patience. It's not gonna be super impossible. It's just gonna require you that you be patient with when you slide things up so you're not impacting everything. Anyway, let's get up underneath the truck. We'll talk through the installation and then we'll get rocking and rolling on this project. All right, one thing I will note before we go ahead and install the intercooler is I do have a front mount license plate. My state does require that. What I'm gonna do is end up moving that license plate over to the side here. I already have a bracket from Swarfworks on order. Uh, I think they're just on back order at the moment. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. Obviously, you're gonna get the most optimal performance by opening up this this lower grill so that all the air is gonna go into the intercooler and also removing those those vents or the damper blades behind there. We'll talk about that later on. But long-term, we're gonna be moving this guy over to that side. All right, so the first thing you need to do in order to get access to your intercooler up behind your bumper is remove the skid plate. It's gonna be two 13 millimeter bolts on each side of the front and then one 15 millimeter bolt on each side in the back. So you're gonna be removing four 13s in the front, two 15s in the back, and then that skid plate should just drop straight down. All right, so with the skid plate undone, you get access to the back of the fan here. Let's get our light so we're not getting the shadows, and I will show you what we're gonna be working on here. So we have this plug right here. This is your plug for your fans. We're gonna undo this plug, and then we're gonna tuck that wire up and out of the way. 
Uh, that way it's not going to tangle on everything when we remove the fans. Then up above the elbow here, so this is on the driver's side of your truck, right up above here you have your recirc valve. So this is what's recirculating that excess boost back into your intake when you let off the gas, or in my case I have that vent so it turns it into somewhat of a blow off valve. There's a plug on there as well, we need to undo that because when we pull the intercooler out, the elbow here, the valve, as well as those blue silicone hose couplings are all going to come out with the intercooler including the fan as well. So we want to make sure that everything's detached before we undo this lower uh, intercooler support. This is the only thing that's holding the fan and the intercooler in place other than the hose connections. So well, let's undo the plug and then we'll actually go over to the passenger side. We'll undo these clamps as well. Take your time. I think this is an eight millimeter uh, socket that will undo these clamps. We want to leave the blue hose couplings on the intercooler because we're going to have to swap those over to the new intercooler. So, all right. Sorry for all the twisting around. Just a quick update, this is a seven millimeter socket, not an eight millimeter. Top one's pretty tight, but one thing to note, when you go to reinstall these things, take note of the orientation of these and try to put it in a location that's easier. So this one was pretty easy to get to. That top one, what I might do is rotate it so that I can get access from this side, from the outboard side of the clamp. That way it's easier to get to later on for servicing. Anyway, now we're gonna turn our attention to this elbow here. So there is a metal clip, and it's like a spring clip that goes all the way around the collar here, and that's what's holding this plastic elbow to the intercooler. So all you need to do is just carefully pull that spring clip off and pull it back onto the, the neck of the joint here. That way it'll allow you to release this intercooler pipe here, so this little elbow. Then what we'll do is we'll be able to get access to the plug for the uh, recirc vent, unplug that. And at that point, everything from, everything tying the intercooler to the vehicle is undone well actually this so this is your recirc pipe as well all you got to do is just squeeze this guy and this guy pops straight off so it's a quarter turn that pops off so recap once i undo that spring clamp this elbow will be able to come off and then i'll be able to get access to the plug up behind it on the recirc valve once i unplug that then the intercooler is then now finally detached from the vehicle so then what we could do is go ahead and use a 15 millimeter socket here and on the other side, to carefully lower everything out. Again, that fan and the intercooler are gonna wanna drop out when you do this, so be careful, take your time doing it, or you're gonna be sitting there with an intercooler looking stamp on your face when this thing falls. All right, with the intercooler out of the way, the last thing we need to do to prep the vehicle for the new intercooler to go in is remove this collar around the shutters down here on the lower portion. Later on down the road, I am gonna remove these shutters because again, if we're putting in a new intercooler, we're gonna want maximum airflow, and I feel like these shutters are gonna to impact that. And they're really there for fuel efficiency, not exactly max performance, so those will go out of the way uh, down the road. But for now, we're just focused on the intercooler. So we need to remove this piece here. Uh, this piece separates from the main mount here with these little barbs here. So it's basically a bunch of barbs on the bottom and on top, it will fight you, uh, but just use a plastic pry tool and work yourself all on the bottom and then on the top and then this portion is gonna come right All in. right, so this is that plastic trim piece that you had to remove. Uh, let's see, this is the bottom right here. So this is what you're looking at. Those are all the holes you gotta pry on. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get this thing off, but once you get the bottom and the sides off, the, bop, the top does pop off pretty easily. So now we don't need that. We'll set that guy aside. So now we got our factory intercooler and we got our CV intercooler. Right off the bat, you can see a huge size difference. It's also a little bit different type. So we got fin and plate versus fin and tube, uh, which is gonna give us a little bit more heat exchanging capabilities out of the CV one. So let's talk through what we gotta swap over. Obviously, hose clamps. These are just gonna go direct from here over to here. And remember this top one, we are gonna rotate this guy so it's on the bottom on the far right on the outboard side so it's easier to get to. And this guy's gonna stay on the inboard side. Then we're gonna remove our recirc valve. So this here is one bolt and then it's gonna be a quarter turn and it'll pop in right here. It'll reinstall it with a quarter turn and we're gonna use this factory supplied hardware here to attach the circ valve to the back of the intercooler. And then here, nothing to do here because this is where the elbow is gonna connect underneath the vehicle. So let's get everything swapped over and then we'll start talking through the reinstallation of this whole guy. All right, so as far as removing your recirc valve from your factory intercooler, there's an eight millimeter screw holding it to the plastic portion of the intercooler. Once you undo that, then it's just sliding this guy up like that and he pops right out. And then we're just gonna drop it into place here and then reinstall it on the new CV intercooler once we get these caps off. And again, we're gonna use the hardware that comes in the kit because, let's get this guy out there, this is the screw that attaches to the factory intercooler and obviously since it's plastic, it's a little bit different. It's kind of a self-tapping thing, whereas this one's a machine screw. 
All right, I guess before I swap all, all the goods over from the OEM to the CV one, we should be taking a look at the differences between the two. So you can see factory intercooler, pretty tiny. CV intercooler, much larger. Again, like I said, heat transfer is a function of surface area. So every opportunity you have to increase the surface area or the flow rate, which we're not able to change right now, um, that will improve the heat efficiency or the efficiency of the intercooler itself. So when cold air is passing through here and you got hot air going through the plates, the more area you allow to transfer the heat from the hot air into the cold air, the better the intercooler is gonna perform. Other things to point out here, let's see if I could do this one-handed. On the CV intercooler, oh, that's heavy. You also get a drain plug right here in the event that you do need to evacuate any sort of moisture out of the intercooler itself. So let's go ahead and swap the couplings over. The other things we need to swap over from the factory intercooler are these rubber foot little feet things here, or these little bushings. So we're gonna swap the bottom ones over to this side, top ones up to the top. This is what allows the intercooler to mount into the factory intercooler plate. Probably easier to show you how everything lines up outside of the truck so that you know how everything is gonna be going back in. That way you can have a plan of attack. So we have our diverter valve up here. This is the driver's side of the intercooler. This is the passenger side. The fan basically lives on top. So there's basically a big elbow up on top that sits on top of the intercooler. You got little rubber feet here. Then you got your rubber feet on the top of the intercooler. These are gonna have a home underneath the truck and there's two pretty predominant holes on each side where these will land. The rubber feet from the fan fit on the inside ones and then the rubber feet from the intercooler sit in the outside ones. So essentially when you go to reinstall everything, this is what it's gonna look like. So it's gonna be a little bit of an exercise, a little bit of a practice and patience, but I figure it's easier to show you what it's supposed to look like. That way when you go up underneath the truck, you have a plan of attack or you at least have an idea of how things line up so you're not surprised by things. All right, let's get our cap pulled off here and then we can get underneath the truck. I'm probably not gonna be able to film this to the extent that I'd want to because there's not a lot of room. But this is what we're working with. This is what the final product looks like. Let's go ahead and get this guy dropped into place. All right, slight change of plans. I had the intercooler and fan and everything installed, or I guess in place, but I could not get the top of the intercooler mount holes or mount poles to line up with the holes here. So I want to make sure that the intercooler is properly seated. And the reason being is the shutter housing assembly is just a little too big or the intercooler is just a little too big. But anyway, what we're gonna do now is, and this is something I was gonna do down the road anyway, but I figure now that we got everything out of the out of the truck, we'll just do it now. We're gonna go ahead and remove the active intercooler shutters. And I believe it's four eight millimeter bolts. So there's one right there, one up top, one right there, and then one up top on the other side. And then it's just unplugging this thing. And I believe this whole shutter assembly should pop out. It's already pretty loose because I loosened up that side. And then the good news is once we pull this out, we should have plenty of room to put the intercooler back in. It is a tight space when this thing's in there, but with this out of the way, that gives you another inch and a half of space to deal with. That way you're not hitting this because getting the fans in with the intercooler in here while these shutters are in place is a really tight fit. But we're gonna go ahead and just remove these. We're gonna do it anyway, like I said. Let's just get them out of the way and favor performance over mileage. All right, that was a bit of an exercise. The four eight millimeter bolts aren't horrible to get out. What sucks is trying to pull these push pins off the top of the shutter shroud trying to get it out because there's a big old wire that's hanging or there's a harness that's attached across the top of it and i believe that's for your uh diverter valve or your recirc valve and there's a bunch of push pins that go in here and you basically got to undo each of those in order to get this whole bad boy out so now that that's out we got a ton of room in there so let me go ahead and clean everything up um one thing you will need to do is you have this big old harness here and again, this is for the recirc valve. You're gonna go ahead and there's another harness right through here. Just zip tie that guy to there so it's up and out of the way. All right, we got all of our stuff cleaned up. That harness that was dangling below my truck, you see it's right here, just zip tied up out of the way. This is the existing harness I was talking about. And then the plug for the diverter valve is right over here. This is gonna plug into our recirc, blow off valve, whatever you wanna call it. Then we have our fan harness right here. That's ready to go, tucked up out of the way. Now all we need to do, finally, is drop the intercooler into place. And again, we're aiming for these mounting holes here. So you got one on the right side, one on the left side. That's where the intercooler top is gonna go into, and then the fan's gonna go in right here. So you make sure you line those up, and then everything should be smooth sailing. Just reverse the process, attach this guy, attach this hose, go over to the other side, and then button everything. All right, up. everything is in place. Without those shutters there, you got a ton of room here. So this is pretty dope. It's gonna get a lot of air to that intercooler. So again, reinstall. Make sure your hose clamps are positioned the where you want them to. Remember I said I wanna put one on the inboard side, one on the outboard side, so that down the road when we do those hot and cold pipes, 
It's easy to swap those out. Make sure you plug in your fans. Make sure you plug in your diverter valve, which is up there. Make sure the spring clip is fully seated. This guy does need to get pushed into the intercooler pretty hard in order for it to sit down as good as it needs to. Uh, make sure you reinstall this vent pipe here. And then everything is basically just making sure everything lines up. So the fan with this bottom bracket is really hard to not, you know, really hard to mess up installing the fan here. You just need to make sure that it is pushed up against the intercooler when you're bolting everything up. Go ahead, reinstall your 15 millimeter bolts here, and then you are good to go. So what I'm going to do is clean up everything, get that skid plate reinstalled, and we're going to take this guy for a test drive and talk about kind of the recap on this product. Again, I wasn't anticipating removing these shutters, but because of the size of this intercooler, it just made it a hell of a lot easier to remove them since I was going to do it anyway. And it gives me a ton of room for access down here in case we want to do anything fun down here all right just got the truck back from test drive everything is working a okay so i'm sure the first question is can you tell any difference in it well and the reality is you really got to wait for that intercooler to get heat soaked for it to really be beneficial for the truck um in just a couple of quick pulls that i did it's really just going to behave just like oem which is perfect that's fine it's really those long-term drives where everything's really heated up that that intercooler is going to come to life and really be beneficial for how i'm going to use it Second question you're all probably wondering is when you unplug the grill shutters and just leave the plug dangling down below and I, I wrapped it up in a Ziploc bag and zip tied it out of the way, do you get an air on your on your dash? And the answer is no, you get no air. It's not related to any sort of engine operation component. So it's unlikely that we'll ever have any sort of air on a dashboard. So it's all right to just unplug that tuck it up out of the way worth noting if you are going to get the front or the high mount intercooler the one that goes up behind the main grill you end up having to cut out the the active shutter assembly so you got to do the same thing up top but with the exception of you're cutting it out on the top versus on the bottom we just unbolted everything so really a one-way door product versus a two-way door product it's easy to reverse this one whereas the high mount uh, if you go that direction count on that being your permanent setup for your truck Huge shout out to CV Fabrication for allowing me to do this and be a part of their affiliate program. So worth saying, if you are gonna purchase this intercooler or the high mount one, I'll leave a link down in the description for both. Um, those affiliate links allow me to keep this channel moving forward. If you don't use them, that's fine, whatever. Uh, but definitely every time you use those affiliate links and across any of my videos, it certainly helps the channel bring more projects to you. If you have any questions, let me know. Start to finish, project was about three hours. Had I just went in knowing that I was gonna remove those shutters right off the bat, it probably would have been about an hour and a half project by myself. So that said, we're gonna enjoy this truck. Have a good one, take care, bye.